Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Wah, and this is your brother, Kafapo. We thank you for joining us today, and we have an awesome lesson for you guys today. Many things are going on at the end of the world, as everybody can see. We see everything going on with COVID. We see everything going on with Black Lives Matter. Now, we have to touch on another important factor that's going on in the world, and that's the uplifting of women. Now, this is an agenda because the Hebrews, we never had a problem with a woman being in power. As we see Deborah, as we see Judith, as we see Esther, we never had a problem with this. So why are they using this to uplift women in these end times? <laughs> so we're going to get into this. We're going to figure out what is the end goal by the grace of Allah and we're just gonna do it. How you feel, Casa? Feel good. Praise Ahaya. Glad to be here. So, in accordance with what our brothers speaking of and the calling that we are called unto as brethren here in the gospel, we must exhort one another so much the more as we see the day approaching. Hence, we're going into topics such as these. Uh, Zach, well, can you read Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-three to twenty-five, please? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. As we've been doing the past few lessons, we've been going into understanding how we can actually attain unto love and how to perform good works. Hopefully we gain more edification today as well. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. And hence we are here today. We're coming together, not forsaking one another, and we have been given exhortation to help us grow and be aware of what's coming in these end times as we see the days approaching. Um, the exhortation for the sisters hand of faith, as we talked about the attack, it's on the women to lift themselves up. And why they're doing it, from the scriptures we can see that the women are actually a vital part of salvation. From the outward view, it's one of the most important things for the women to be converted, to see salvation come onto the world. When we look at the words of Peter the Apostle, to see how important the women are to the salvation of us all. Uh, can we read? First Peter chapter three, I'm going to read verse one to, I think is about verse six or seven, please. Okay. First Peter chapter three, verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Notice. Zachariah started off talking about how the Hebrews never had any issue with women being in power. Right. You have Judith. She was in subjection to her husband. Even as he was gone, she was still in subjection unto him. Right. And then you have Esther. She was in subjection to her cousin who had became a father figure unto her, though her father had already passed. And she still was a servant unto her people, even though she was queen of the Persians. To see how the women still remained in humility, even though they were put in positions of power. And that's why Peter is exhorting the women to remain in that subjection unto their own husbands. And good reason, so that if any obey not the word, there are people who don't believe what the scriptures say. But when they see the behavior of the women, because the word conversation. Can you read the definition of conversation, please, Zachary? G. 391, please. Yes. Yeah. Manner of life, conduct, behavior, or deportment. When they see the women's manner of life, that is what is going to actually convert them to believe the gospel. Can we read verse 2, please? Yes. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So as we see, this is what's key. Peter, the apostle, gave the understanding of the very important part that the women play in this gospel. And in that walk, the women, they 
adorn themselves in the fruits of the spirit, all their adornments, the things that attract people to the gospel of Christ are all the things that come from within, not the outward adorning to bring people unto Allah Hayyam. As Peter continues to exhort, can we read the rest of Peter, please? Yes. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and a wearing of gold or a putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of Allah of great price. This is the great value that Ahaya has for his daughters in the world because he uses them to bring unbelievers unto him. Hence his calling is so great for them. And the scriptures continue to attest of the great value of a woman that is walking in the spirit of Christ. Can you read Sirach chapter 26, verse 13 to 15, please? Sure. Sirach chapter 26, verse 13. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, and her discretion will fat his bones. A silent and loving woman is a gift of Ahaya, and there is nothing so much worse as a mind well instructed. Notice where Ahaya holds value for his daughters. A meek and quiet spirit is of great price. A mind well instructed, there's nothing so much more worth than that in his eyes for his daughters. Continue, please. Don't forget a loving woman. He said loving. Oh, yes. Yeah. Silent and loving, of course. Yeah, man. That's essential. <laughs> that is essential. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Uh, All right. A, a shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace, and her continent mind cannot be valued. Hopefully we see very straightly in the sight of Allah Hayyam, what can't be valued is of great price. There's nothing more worth than these things pertaining to his daughters to understand how important the women are to his calling and how important his daughters are to him in general. You want to know what's interesting about that? Is everything that Ahaya said was great and can't be valued and is much worth is everything opposite that they're pushing in the media for the women. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The meekness, the quiet spirit, the silence, the love being loving. Right. Hopefully already you can see, brothers and sisters, the attack on the women already. Right. Just by seeing what the will of Allah Hayyam is, we get to see what the will of the enemy is and what the lust of the world is. And this calling that the women were called on to had been from the ancient times we read in Sirach. That's from the days during the Greek Empire. That book was written. We have Peter from the days of the Roman Empire. And then even, let's see the exhortations for the women for Clement, who came after the apostles in the latter times of the Roman Empire, even in the AD times. Let's read uh, 1 Clement chapter 21, verse 6 and 7, please. Okay. Let us guide our women toward that which is good. Let them show forth the lovely disposition of purity. Let them prove their sincere affection of gentleness. Let them make manifest the moderation of their tongue through their silence. Let them show their love, not in fictitious preferences, but without partiality toward all them that fear Allah in holiness. See, all the things that the scriptures advise us to teach the women and for the women to do is contrary to the world. The women are taught to be clicky. Right. To have their groups, whereas the scriptures teach us not to operate like that, but to walk in love towards all to show your moderation through your silence, whereas the world is saying, do what you want to do and be bold and it's completely contrary to Allah I am. And right. it, the attack is direct and it's with purpose because the devil understood that for the women, if he could get to the weaker vessel, he could get to the man and destroy the image of Allah I am. It's very much with purpose. And for the women in righteousness, it's not that women don't speak, but the women, when they do speak, they have a quiet spirit. And when 
they are asked of their faith, they answer according to righteousness, as we read in 1 Peter 3 and 15. Zach, well, please. No problem. But sanctify the Lord Elohim in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So we understand that it's not that women don't speak at all. It's just they speak with discretion, with moderation. And they understand when, and they are very meek in all that goes about. Even as Sarah was meek where, when Abraham was sitting with the angels, talking with them outside the tent, she didn't say anything. She sat in the tent. And then, of course, the angel heard her laughing within herself. It's an angel. <laughs> so <laughs> she couldn't avoid that. <laughs> but the meekness of the women was always evident. All right. She wasn't out there sitting amongst the men all in their dialogue, you know. Right. She was very right. meek and discreet, you know. And all these righteous women, you even have Judith. Clement talked about Judith, how she was meek in that. She went to the elders of the people because her husband had passed, but she was still in subjection to the people that ruled the city and asked them permission to go and deliver the people rather than just taking it upon herself and going out and doing what she wanted, showing how the righteous women had operated that proper meekness and righteousness in the sight of Allah Hayyam, so that the daughters here in the faith, whether Jew or Gentile, can also have an example of how the righteous women ought to operate. And Peter exhorts of the same thing. Can you read uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, please? Sure. But after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in Elohim, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Adono, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. There we see from the scriptures that operating in that righteous behavior shows your trust in Allah Hayyam. Right. And now it hopefully helps give understanding of how the works of the world, the way the world is pushing a women is to show who they're truly trusting in here in these end times. Right. Trusting in the works of the flesh and the works of Satan. And now well, we see the calling for the women to be a light unto the world through their meekness, quiet spirit, chastity loving um behavior which will convert many now in these end times this is why we exhort and for the brothers and sisters to understand that the serpent he's attacking the woman again by the same means that he attacked her in the beginning right. let's read second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 please but i fear least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That's what he did in the beginning, through subtlety. He attacked it through lust, through doubt, and through the desire of knowledge and power from that simplicity that is in Christ. What we went over here prior, the different scriptures going over how the women are in righteousness, that's the simplicity of Christ. Right. That's what he's seeking to beguile the women from here again. And why is he doing it? Through envy, according to scripture. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24, please. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold his side do find it. It's interesting that he's doing it through envy. Now, you know, in the world, we talk about how people are hating on us, right? The devil, the works that he's pushing people toward is literally because he's hating. He's jealous of what Ahaya has given unto us. In that we had glory and were praised by the angels when we walked in the simplicity of obedience to his commands. So knowing that, hopefully we'll be encouraged to stay in the faith knowing that we do have a hater right. and he just doesn't want to see us attain unto what Ahaya has for us. And that's his purpose of it all. He was grieved from the beginning. Let's read um, the lives of Adam and Eve, chapter 16, to hear what he said concerning uh, why he beguiled us. I want to touch on something before you go into that. Um, sure. Because we know that our enemy is the devil. 
And what happened with Eve is very interesting because he didn't use her husband against her. He didn't say, Adam doesn't want you to know this or Adam doesn't want you to have this. He said, Elohim didn't want you to have it. Elohim didn't want you to know it. He literally used our creator, our maker, our Elohim against us. So right. it's not that you're fighting against a man or your husband trying to gain power or, or having a, a battle of power. You're literally fighting against Elohim. And that's the thing that we need to understand is that Satan, he can care less if you disrespect your husband or you lift yourself over your husband because that's not the end goal. And that's not what's going to completely destroy your soul. What's going to completely destroy your soul is when you lift yourself over Elohim. And that's exactly what Eve did. And that's when she transgressed a great sin. So, yes, fearing Elohim will make you honor your husband and do those things that we were talking about at the beginning of the lesson, but that's not the end goal. The end goal is for you to blaspheme Elohim or lift yourself up above Elohim. That's one of the end goals, so to speak. You know what? To show that it's definitely against Elohim, there's a scripture where Paul talks about this. This is what the women ought to teach the younger women. Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, it says, The age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. We just went over all the things pertaining to holiness, right? right. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Allah be not blasphemed. Right. Showing everything Paul just mentioned is what the world teaches the women to be opposite of because it blasphemes Ahaya's word. Right. And that's what lifts them up against him. So it helps give understanding of what the attack is to know why you don't want to do these things, why you want to strive to come out of it, to be not partakers with the world. Right. We were in lives of Adam and Eve, chapter 16, to see Satan would not humble himself to worship a lesser creature or to serve a lesser creature. Hence, he pushes those who serve him to lift themselves up against their master as well, because he wasn't obedient to Allah Hayyam. Hence, that's what his spirit encourages people to do. Uh, just for people who are not familiar with this book, um, when Adam was created, all the angels were instructed to bow down to Adam because he was made in the image of Allah Hayyam. And Satan was the only one and his angels that followed after him that didn't bow down to Adam. And for that, he was banished to the earth because of his pride, because he didn't want to worship a, a lesser being than himself, since he was created days before Adam. Yeah. Right. And he was beautiful. His beauty deceived him. Right. It's interesting in that the devil's beauty deceived him, right? And he felt he should be worshipped, whereas for the women, they are admonished in Proverbs 31 and 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain to help them not be deceived by their favor of appearance, nor put value in their beauty to help them stay away from the devil. Because holding value and beauty deceive the devil to be haughty and desire praise. So we can understand he seduces others to value their beauty, to be deceived by their favor, and given over to spirits like vainglory and fornication to desire to be worshipped by mankind. Now Proverbs goes on to say, but a woman that faith Ahaya, she shall be praised. So you can see, the virtuous woman takes the humble route in fear and Allah Hayyam, not being deceived by her favor or valuing her beauty, walking in simplicity of the faith, obeying his voice to garner praise from the angels and the righteous, 
whereas the devil wants them to get caught up in the pride of value and their beauty so that they can't get back to the glory they held in the beginning when they walked in righteousness. He said it himself. He was grieved through the glory that Ahaya gave us. Hence, he deceived us. He deceived the woman, knowing that she was the weaker vessel. All right. And Elohim Ahaya was wroth with me and banished me and my angels from our glory. And on thy account, were we expelled from our abodes into this world and hurled on the earth. And straightway we were overcome with grief, since we had been spoiled of so great glory. And we were grieved when we saw thee in such joy and luxury. And with guile I cheated thy wife, and caused thee to be expelled through her doing from thy joy and luxury, as I have been driven out of my glory. There we see the first crab in the bucket mentality devil he was taken from his glory so he wanted to take us from our glory right. the woman was created to be a help me unto the man even as the spirit is a help me unto the father therefore his whole mo was to get her to destroy her husband by having her lift herself up against Allah Hayyam, which will cause her to be a detriment to our household so understanding his works hopefully the woman can see what the attack really is to understand you and your husband or you and your father have a common enemy right, seeking to take away the unity of the household. Okay. Now, let's look at what happened of how he cheated the woman, as he said, how he cheated the woman and caused us to be expelled out of the garden. Um, let's go to Apocalypse of Moses. We're going to start at chapter 15, please. Then saith Eve to them, Here are my children and children's children, and I will relate to you how the enemy deceived us. So here she's telling us all. This is for us all to listen unto. And notice she set an example of a believer that she was repenting, confessing her faults. Right. right? It befell that we were guarding paradise, each of us the portion allotted to us from Elohim. Now I guarded in my lot the west and the south, but the devil went to Adam's lot, where the male creatures were. For Elohim divided the creatures, all the males he gave to your father, and all the females he gave to me. Chapter 17. And instantly he hung himself from the wall of paradise. And when the angels ascended to worship Elohim, then Satan appeared in the form of an angel and sang hymns like the angels. So we skip chapter 16, what had happened, the devil went to Adam's lot to go get the serpent because he was a male. And he, the serpent agreed to let him speak through him. And then the serpent came and hung himself from the wall of paradise. And the devil came in the shape of an angel singing hymns during the time of prayer, all right, when the angels go away. So the angels were gone at this time. All right, continue, please. And I bent over the wall and saw him like an angel. But he says to me, Art thou Chiawa? And I said to him, I am. What art thou doing in paradise? And I said to him, Elohim set us to guard and to eat of it. The devil answered through the mouth of the serpent, Ye do well, but do ye not eat of every plant? Did you notice that she answered in fair and meekness? She answered in simplicity, and then here comes the deception. All right. Continue, please. And I said, Yea, we eat of all, save one only, which is in the midst of paradise, concerning which Elohim charged us not to eat of it. For he said to us, On the day on which ye eat of it, ye shall die the death. Notice, she was given the command from Elohim too, and answered in that simplicity as a believer, coupled with fear, with fear and meekness, yet the devil, through the serpent, placed doubt concerning the word of Allah Hayyam by his statements, tempting her against the simplicity of faith and the contentment in what Allah Hayyam offers. All right, can you please? I want to touch on something here because sure. a lot of times people say that Adam should have been the man and should have protected her from the serpent. And this is where we get into women and men 
both have to walk the walk. Nobody can walk the walk for you. You have to take the initiative to do what is needful for your salvation, just as the man has to do what is needful for his salvation. You have to walk on your own. Nobody can walk for you. Now, Adam was in the north and the east, while Eve was in the west and the south with the women. She had to be an example of a believer, just like he had to be an example of a believer. So she was going to be tempted, just like he was going to be tempted. And they both have to be able to stand. Although they're together as one, they have to be able to stand on their own. This is why Ahaya said a wife well instructed, because that means that she's going to do what she's instructed to do. She's going to hold fast to the faith of what she was instructed and keep it no matter what. And the man is supposed to teach her what is needful for salvation, and she's supposed to do it and hold fast to it. And he's supposed to hold fast to it as well because he can teach her how to do it and fall away from the faith himself. So everybody has a responsibility in the faith. Now women also have to pay attention to the signs because Eve well knew that the angels wanted to go pray at evening prayer. Now that's a red flag to see that an angel was still lingering. And if she would have paid attention to the signs, it would have saved her. But she omitted the signs because of her own lust and the things that she wanted in her heart. So it's the heart that really has to be paid attention to. Women have to have the right intention and the right motive and the right heart and the right mindset in order to serve Allah properly. You are in chapter 18 now. Okay. Uh, then the serpent says to me, may Allah live, but I am grieved on your account. For I would not have you ignorant, but arise, come hither, hearken to me, and eat, and mind the value of that tree. There he goes. He's tempting her with knowledge above the simplicity of the wisdom of Allah and also the lust of the eyes. These are the temptations that the women are still tempted with to this day. I have knowledge above the simplicity of Allah and also lust. Things that are attracted to the eyes. Um, let's continue, please. But I said to him, I fear at least Allah be wroth with me as he told us. She was afraid, but she had given into doubt. Right. Instead of that cleaving to the faith, because Peter said that we are to resist the devil steadfast. But the doubt had already taken place to where it was something to consider. All it took was the right words to lead her away and to take away the fear. The first response after she said, I'm afraid lest he be wroth, the first thing he said is, don't fear. Right. Fear not. That's the goal. Take us away from the fear of Allah. That's the agenda here in this world. All right? Continue, please. And here it comes. And he saith to mm -hmm. me, fear not, for as soon as thou eatest of it, ye too shall be as Allah. And that you shall know good and evil. To lift us up. That was the attack on the woman. Depart from the fear of Allah and be her own Allah. Right. To have knowledge for herself. To exalt herself above him. This is the temptation that the woman faced in the beginning. And here we are in this world. The women are being exalted. Right. You have power over your own destiny. You control. The things you do control what's going to happen. Like, yes, that's true. The things you do, if you don't keep the commandments and walk in the fruits of the Spirit, it is going to control what's going to happen to you, where you're going to go. But they use it as you control your destiny. You control whether you're going to be successful or not. It's the things you do. You have to grab hold of it and take it. You're completely omitting Allah. Right. They do it in the religions, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. This is your year. You know, this is your year. This is you. You. Everything's you, you, you. The agenda is real. They're all a part of it. They're all a part of the deception. Right. 
This next verse helps show that, as Zakwa mentioned earlier, the agenda is really to pit the woman against Allah Hayyam. Right. It's not even about the man in regards to how he attacks the women. Continue, please. But Allah Hayyam perceived this, that you would be like him. So he envied you and said, you shall not eat of it. Ooh. He did not mention her husband at all. Right. He kept it straight to her. Like, he envied you. Like, Allah Hayyam envied you. Like, he was... Ooh. It's tough what he said. Right. To plant such a thing. To think that the way of Allah Hayyam, the fear of Allah Hayyam is out of envy towards you. These commandments that he gave you is because he's jealous of you. He's trying to keep you down. Right. There's so much more for you. But... Man, it's... He did it. Right. And he's doing it. It makes the commandment seem like it's bondage. Right. Like, whereas the commandments is actually the law of liberty. So we can see how the deception that the devil has brought us into the bondage of sin through the words such as these. Uh, continue, please. So he envied you and said, you shall not eat of it. Nay, do thou give heed to the plant, and thou wilt see its great glory. Notice now, use your eyes, use the carnal things and see. Look at what's in front of you to see this great glory. Whereas faith, we walk not by sight. That's right. We don't go according to what we see, but we go according to what is believed by the word of Allah. Hayyam. Setting her to be contrary. Deceiving the simple mind because she didn't have understanding of the fullness yet. Continue, please. Yet I feared to take the fruit. In fairness, though, you know, we have compassion toward our mother because she got deceived. Right. She didn't know what he was doing to her. She was um, <laughs> too naive. Right. That's what, um, who speaks right. on that? Um, uh, I forgot who it was in the New Testament who speaks on how the workers of iniquity are are, uh, are greater. A wiser than the children of right? Uh, right, a wiser than the children, right. Yeah, Yache said it. Yache said it. Mm. Children of the world are wiser than the children of light. Right. And They're wise to do evil. That's right. And we're supposed to be as little children. But we're also supposed to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So right. we have to put in the time to study and to understand what's working against us. So. That's right. And that's why our wisdom is the fear of Allah. Hayyam. That's why it's important to get in the scriptures, understand what the calling of the faith is, because that's what's going to make you wise as a serpent. Because the serpent actually knows the law. He does. The devil knows the commandments. <laughs> he knows he knows what we're supposed to do. Hence, that's how we become, because we'll have that real knowledge of good and evil. By the law, you'll know what's good and what's evil. And that will keep us from transgressing. That's even what Moses was talking about. He said the people say, uh, how, how great is they that have Allah so nigh unto them. The law is our lamp, you know, even in uh, the prophets. Um, right. Hmm? Like, over and over, it was just continually saying that's what was going to deliver us. It's just knowing the commandments. And everything that is contrary to it is iniquity or is leading us down the wrong path. Like, it's really very simple. That's the simplicity of Christ. It isn't seeing it for what it is. That's the simplicity. It's really that simple right. to be saved. So she said, yet I fear to take the, of the fruit. And he saith to me, <laughs> come hither and I will give it to thee. Follow me. This is the part where she was gone. Right. He didn't follow her husband. Didn't follow Allah Hayyam, but through the temptation of being as Allah Hayyam, through the deception of thinking that she was envied, she followed 
another. And this is what's happening in the world today. It's tough because Allah Hayyam had given her so much. She was in rulership over all the female creatures, and she was keeping watch over the, the West and the South and didn't see the gift that was given unto her. All she could see was what she didn't have. That's why holiness with contentment is a great gain. Right. Yeah, that's a focus for the sisters as well, because as we're discussing the attack, we also discuss how to overcome the wisdom of Allah Hayyam, knowing the commandments, walking in it, all the righteousness that women exemplify to convert people to the faith and contentment. Being content with our portion. All right. Knowing that Allah Hayyam giveth and Allah Hayyam taketh away. That if there's something that Allah Hayyam wants you to have, he's going to give it to you. There's nothing that you have to do except keep the commandments and walk in faith. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Job is a testimony. Right. Abraham is a testimony. The forefathers, J Jacob, he went with a staff right. and faith. <laughs> he came back with all his children and goods, riches. So even, even for the carnal things, all it takes is faith. Let's let's continue here. So sadly, let's see. Uh, the devil deceived our mother and got her to follow him. I'm in chapter 19 now. And I opened to him, and he walked a little way. Then turned and said to me, I have changed my mind, and I would not give thee to eat until thou swear to me to give also to thy husband. Finally, once he got her under his dominion. Right. Got her to follow him. Now the husband's mentioned. Right. Got her to lift herself up against Allah Hayyam and let him become her Allah Hayyam. That's what it takes now. first. That's what it takes first. Because to whom ye serve is to whom... Where, where the, uh, Romans 6? To whom you yield yourselves is to whom you obey. That's it. Romans 6. That's the right. one. And once she yielded herself to the devil and to the serpent, then all her works can now be of iniquity. Where once she yielded herself to Allah Hayyam, all her works were going to be a righteousness. So you see how big the picture is because to honor your husband, you have to be serving Allah Hayyam. It's, 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 a, it's clear as day. There's, there's a, a great line separating the two. She had to serve the devil before she could do the great sin against Allah Hayyam. Yeah. She had, she had to uh, it. right. That's something to think about. That's something very definitely something to keep in perspective. Right. So you have to ask yourself the works that you're doing. Are they showing that you're serving Allah or are they showing that you're serving the devil? And that's a very important thing to ask yourself in truth to figure out, okay, what do I need to do from this point on? What do I want? Who do I want to serve? Because you're going to have to start making changes in your life to serve who you're trying to serve. You can't be operating in iniquity and blaspheming your father and your husband and then say you're serving Allah Hayyam. That's hypocrisy. So we're speaking to you as family, as brothers. This is the time, during this time, what's going on in the world right now, it's time to really examine yourself and make a choice as to who you are serving. And make the proper changes if that's not who you intend to serve. These are the things that we need to think about. These are the changes that we need to make now. Now, today, while there's time. 
not pushing it off tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to worry about that tomorrow. I'm going to do what I need to do today, but I'll worry about it tomorrow. No, stop. Let's think about this today. Let's think about this. Let's make the proper changes today and really examine ourselves. Look deep within yourself and be honest and truthful with yourself and see and see yourself for who you are. See yourself for what you become. And from there, we can make the proper changes. From there, we can we can change because we see what we're doing wrong. If we don't see what we're doing wrong, we can't change it. So that's the step that we need to make today. That's the step I want you to make today. Amen. Amen, brother. Praise Ahaya. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Know that in that assessment, look at the scriptures. That's the great guide to be objective. Right. I have the scriptures like we went over earlier in the lesson, and we'll go over some towards the end. Compare yourselves to what the scriptures say you're supposed to be and give that honest, objective look at yourself to see it for what it is so that you can start making a change. This is that step forward we are called unto. And may, may Yache strengthen us all. May he strengthen us all. all right. Don't compare yourself amongst men. Yes. Because Paul said, if it wasn't for the law, he had not known fornication unless it had been by the law. So we have to compare ourselves to the scriptures, to the commandments. And that's how we know if we're in iniquity or if we're on the right track. Yes, sir. And it is a transgression to compare ourselves amongst others. Right. Paul said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Them that compare themselves amongst themselves are not wise. Self-examination is 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 speaks about. So we're exhorting you all. The day is approaching. We're exhorting you all because we have to get it together. That's right. While we have the time and we need the sisters, we need you all, all right. to convert many, convert the world unto the faith. People uh, want to see the gospel, not hear it. Women are powerful. We know it. We, yes. we being Hebrews, we always embrace our women. And we know that women are powerful. Even the nation know that all women are powerful. And any woman that's in the faith of Meshiach Yache is powerful. We always known that. And we know that it converts many just by seeing how a woman operates because women are very, uh, what's, the, what's the word? Um, they're very um, persuasive. Women are very persuasive. They can make somebody through their works, through their speech and righteousness, through their chast speech and chast conversation, they can turn the heart of somebody. Hey, as you speak of women being powerful, the Holy Spirit, she's a woman. That's right. And the church. It's the, yes. What more do you need to understand the power of women right. to convert a soul if the Holy Spirit is a woman? And the Holy Spirit was working through all the prophets, and it wasn't them speaking that was converting or changing. It was the Holy Spirit working in them speaking it was it's powerful you know the 12 virgins all right women are women are of great power when Hermes saw them he said they looked like they were strong enough to carry the world right. <laughs> take the world on their shoulders <laughs> you know <laughs> the world tries to speak of the, the woman empowerment but they turn the woman from away the true power that they have in right. Christ. Right. In Yacha, yeah, women can, can move mountains. <laughs> yes, through pain. That's right. It's amazing. The truth is so much better than a lie. Right. Praise a higher for this exhortation. Praise him indeed. So we're in chapter 19. Sadly, he had gotten her to follow him. She opened unto him, and then, once he got under his dominion, then he sought to turn her against her husband. 
let's pick up from there. He said, I will not give to thee to eat until thou swear to me to give also to thy husband. All right, continue, please. And I said, what sort of oath shall I swear to thee? Yet what I know, I say to thee, by the throne of the master and by the cherubim and the tree of life, I will give also to my husband to eat. And when he had received the oath from me, he went and poured upon the fruit the poison of his wickedness, which is lust, the root in the beginning of every sin. And he bent the branch on the earth, and I took the fruit, and I ate. Then we see lust being the root and beginning of every sin. He played on her lust, which she didn't know she had. The desire of power, the lust of the eyes. To lift herself up against Allah And continuing, she had called Adam onto her I mean, chapter 23. So what had happened, she had ate, she realized what went wrong. She was sad about it, but she had already given herself over and she called onto Adam to deceive him. So we know what had happened. She had deceived Adam and caused him to eat the fruit. This is when Allah had called Adam onto him after Adam had eaten already. Um, chapter 23, please. And Allah called Adam, saying, Adam, where art thou? Can the house be hidden from the presence of its builder? Then your father answered, It is not because we think not to be found by thee, Adonah, that we hide, but I was afraid because I am naked. And I was ashamed before thy might, my master. Allah saith to him, Who showed thee that thou art naked? Unless thou hast forsaken my commandment, which I delivered thee to keep it. This is the key part here. Then Adam called to mind the word which I spake to him, saying, I will make thee secure before Allah See, when you go back and read this whole story, the devil had spake through her. She didn't speak her own words. And he made her say, I will make thee secure before Allah You see how she had taken authority over him. She usurped authority over her husband by being his protector from Allah instead of the way Ahaya ordained it for the woman to be in subjection. Committed unto her husband as a help meet and a pillar of rest and a tower against death, guarding the commands and helping him to keep the commands of Allah That's what we were touching here to see how the devil had done what he had said he would do to make her as Allah She became an authority through the deception. And continue, please. And he turned and said to me, why hast thou done this? And I said, the serpent deceived me. There we see she was repentant. She understood she made a mistake. And I has been gracious to leave this testimony. So you can see that she gave us understanding of how the devil works so that it doesn't happen to us, any of her children here in these times. A part of this attack on the women now as the spirit of lust is out because the devil poured it on the fruit and that spirit of lust is taking root in us all and we all have to strive against it. One of the major attacks on the women, not only the serpent authority, despising dominion, one of the major attacks is also through the spirit of fornication. The spirit of fornication causes more harm than we know for anyone who struggles with it. Let's read Testament of Simeon chapter 5 verse 3. Beware therefore of fornication, for fornication is mother of all evils, separating from Allah and bringing near to Belier. Now Judah and Reuben help understand how this woman, the spirit of fornication, separates us from Allah and brings us near to the devil. Testament of Judah chapter 17 verse 2 to 6. Beware therefore my children of fornication and the love of money, and hearken to Judah your father. For these things withdraw you from the law of Allah Hayim. So fornication makes keeping the law of Allah Hayim difficult. He goes on to say, And blinds the inclination of the soul, 
and teach arrogance. So fornication teaches a person to be prideful and arrogant. He goes on to say, And suffer not a man to have compassion upon his neighbor. So we see here that it also withstands a person from being compassionate to others and having mercy. Verse 4 goes on to say, They rob his soul of all goodness and oppress him with toils and troubles and drive away sleep from him and devour his flesh. So Judah helps us understand that fornication causes depression and mental health issues as well. He goes on to say, And he hindereth the sacrifices of Allah Hayyam. Now this here shows that the sorrow from the negative mindset and depression hinder a person from sacrificing unto Allah Hayyam with their prayers because sorrow causes prayers not to ascend to the altar, according to the Shepherd of Hermas. It goes on to say in Testament of Judah, chapter 17, verse 5, and he remembereth not the blessing of Allah Hayyam. Now we see fornication causes the anxiety of mind, whether in sorrow, depression, or just a negative outlook. And this causes a person not to see and remember the blessings Allah Hayyam has given them because they might have pessimistic or negative outlook on things. So they miss or minimize their blessings being focused on all the things they don't have or want possibly. Judah goes on to say, He hearkeneth not to a prophet when he speaketh, and resenteth the words of holiness. So fornication causes a person not to receive the true gospel, or the correction they need actually to come into the truth. The reason being for these struggle defamation are, verse 6, For he is a slave to two contrary passions, and cannot obey Allah because they have blinded his soul, and he walketh in the day as in the night. So we get understanding. Obeying Allah leads to a soul full of goodness, with good inclinations, meekness and humbleness, a positive outlook, optimistic mindset, cheerful spirit, sound and sober-mindedness, wellness of mental and physical health, offerings of spiritual prayer, sacrifices with cheerfulness, remembering the blessings of Allah Hayyam, in contentment to be truly thankful for everything, and most notably, the humility of being free from arrogance so as to receive not only the gospel, but also the correction in words of holiness to help us grow and actually come to the knowledge of the truth. All these things, the passion of the spirit of fornication can enslave us so as not to be able to walk in the passion of obeying Allah Hayyam. These are the lesser known works of fornication or understanding the attack. We're not finished discussing the struggles that the spirit of fornication cause, but as we're spending this time to exhort our sisters, it's important to understand, yes, anyone who struggles with fornication can have the struggles that we just covered, but also for the sisters, Allah Hayyam showed Reuben that women struggle with fornication more than men. Uh, can you read that verse, please? Test him to Reuben chapter 5, verse 3. For moreover concerning them, the angel of Ahaya told me and taught me that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication more than men. So unfortunately, we all haven't been raised up in the lust of the world. You can find these symptoms in men and women, but because the women struggle with the spirit of fornication more than men, it's more probable that women, as they're learning themselves and growing to separate themselves from what the world has taught and the lust of the flesh, they'll find they can identify with some of these weaknesses that the spirit of fornication causes. And for the men, knowing that it's more of a struggle for the women, it helps understand why we have to give honor to the weaker vessel and have a lot of compassion in helping our sisters grow to come out from the attack that the devil has been waging 
against both of us. Now, more commonly known about the spirit of fornication is how it entices unto lust to literally commit adultery or fornication with someone. And that spirit of fornication has been attacking the women to cause them to deceive and gain power over men through their adorning. Uh, can we read the Testament of Reuben, please? Chapter 5, I'm going to read verse 1 to 7, please. All right. For evil are women, my children, and since they have no power or strength over man, they use wiles by outward attractions, that they may draw him to themselves and whom they cannot bewitch by outward attractions, him they overcome by craft. For moreover concerning them, the angel of Ahia told me and taught me that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication more than men, and in their heart they plot against men, and by means of their adornment they deceive first their minds, and by the glance of the eye instill the poison. And then through the accomplished act, they take them captive. This is still happening to this day. Right. This is nothing new. So we understand that what the angel of Ahaya told him is true. And sisters have to very much be on guard against this thing. Right. All right, continue, please. For a woman cannot force a man openly, but by a harlot's bearing, she beguiles him. Flee therefore fornication, my children, and command your wives and your daughters that they adorn not their heads and faces to deceive the minds. Because every woman who uses these wiles have been reserved for eternal punishment. There you see very clearly, brothers and sisters, what the world is pushing and where that agenda is leading. The society is very much into beautifying the women. With the intent to deceive the mind. And we see that it's leading to eternal punishment because of the purpose behind it. To beautify oneself is an impurity in your heart, but with the intent to deceive another unto fornication. And this is not something new. This is even what was being done before the flood. And this is a part of why we're going into these things to understand what the agenda is here in these end times. Uh, continue and read in Testament of Reuben chapter 5. We're at verse 6 now. For thus they allured the watchers who were before the flood. For as these continually beheld them, they lusted after them. And they conceived the act in their mind. For they changed themselves into the shape of men and appeared to them when they were with their husbands. Notice what happened. The women actually lusted after the angels and dressed themselves and adorned themselves to deceive the angels, right. cause the angels to lust after them in their mind. So you see how that spirit of fornication is powerful to lead the angels astray to take wives that belong to other men. They didn't go after single women even. They wanted the women that were with their husbands, showing how these women, they already, as we saw it, the first step was to follow the devil. The women had already followed the devil to be enticing men. Like they looking at the angels, catching their eye contact while they're with their husbands to get them to lust after them. And this is where society is leading in. These end times, the women are, being pushed toward the promiscuity and the haughtiness to prepare them for when the fallen angels reveal themselves again. I want to touch on something oh. to, to kind of make this a little bit more clear. Um, oh, it's okay. The spirit of fornication attacks the women more than men. And you can prove this by even looking at this for an example of what was going on with the angels. The women had to have already adorned themselves to deceive the angels before they even walked out of the house. So they already had a preconceived notion before they even left the house. So you can actually see that 
the spirit of fornication had already had the woman before she even walked out of the front door or, or walked out of the tent during that time. So just to put things in proper perspective, you know. So continuing in the story, after the woman had plotted and enticed the angels into fornication, the angels were changed into the form of men and visited them while they were with their husbands. To see how overcome by fornication the women were that it didn't matter that their husbands were there. Right. And then what happened with the women? Let's continue reading, please. And the women lusting in their minds after their forms gave birth to giants. For the watchers appeared to them as reaching even unto heaven. This is what transpired. Lust had taken hold on both angels and the women. And here in society today, lust has taken hold on both the women and the men. Right. Unfortunately, in the world today, it's not uncommon to see a woman plotting against another man to entice him by her adorning or her appearance, even though she's married. And also, it's not uncommon to see a man trying to seduce a woman onto fornication by flaunting his physical appearance, just like the angels did, changing themselves into the forms of men and appearing really big to the women. There are men out here that do the same thing with um, flaunting their physique in order to entice women who have husbands onto fornication. And unfortunately, in the world, both the woman who entertains other men while she's married and the man who entices women that are married are both glorified in the world as the world is about the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. So there's principalities at work that's helping push men and women in this direction with the spirit of fornication being the main culprit. The angels, they understand how the devil got the women to fall in the beginning and they're working the same thing to get the women to the place they need them to be in these end times so that they can have the women again. It's all preparation for what they seek to do. Because they had giants. They said the women gave birth to giants. That really happened back then. And it's going to come here again in these end times. So we can understand. Uh, can you read Enoch chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, please? Okay. Enoch chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. Verse 2. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And we understand how women led them to lust at them through their adorning, as Reuben spoke of. Let's jump to chapter 7, please. Chapter 7, verse 1. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms, and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And there we see how witchcraft came in. The angels taught it to the women first. They yeah. knew that you get the women, you can get everyone else. That's it. Go ahead, Look Zephyr. at that. No, you touched right on where I was going, man. <laughs> <laughs> They understood that the women were powerful. That all you had to do was turn the women, and it was going to turn the hearts of men. Now, even look at this today, how witchcraft is so prevalent. How women are wearing the stones, men are wearing the stones. They're doing the tarot readings. They're doing all these different things, manifestations. They're preparing the women for the fallen angels because the fallen angels are the ones that taught them that and that just shows you what level a woman has to be on for her to connect with one of the fallen angels all right simple continue please and they became pregnant and they bear great giants whose height was three thousand ales who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh. 
and drank the blood. Then the earth lay accusation against the lawless ones. We see that children were tyrants in the earth. All right. And we see the key thing again, they understood get the women first, and then you can overcome everyone else. So you can better understand why there's an attack on the women here in these end times, why the women are being pushed in the direction they're being pushed in society. Right. It's actually agenda against everyone using the women. Get them to lift themselves up against Allah Hayyam, follow the devil and his works, and the spirit of fornication. One step at a time leads the whole world astray. Right. Um, can you read Enoch chapter 16, please? Verse 2 to 4. All right. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who have been aforetime in heaven, say to them, You have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and ye knew worthless ones. And these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women. And through these mysteries, women and men work such evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. We see that they made known their mysteries, though they were worthless ones, to the women. Because it was needful to teach the women in order to lead mankind away. Right. That helps us understand how we are all working much evil in the earth through what the fallen angels have taught. So we've seen that the angels focus on corrupting the women first to destroy all men. It's interesting, as Zakwam, you mentioned how the women are persuasive. And we can see how Allah Hayyam and the devil understands this. Because the devil's on the left hand side of his angels, teaching the women witchcraft, usurping authority, and despising dominion and fornication in order to lead the whole world astray. And on the right hand side, Allah Hayyam is teaching his daughters the meekness of spirit and lowliness of mind and the fruits of righteousness so that by their chaste conversation, they can convert the rest of the world unto the faith of Yahche Christ. So women are the target on the left hand side to lead the world astray through the spirit of fornication and the lust of the flesh. And they're the target on the right hand side to lead the world unto salvation through the Spirit of Christ and the fruits of the Spirit. Hey, Casa, um, can you find where it, if you remember, where it talks about the women who dealt with the fallen angels, what they became? Do you remember that? Oh, and Enoch. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Enoch 19. Uh, chapter 19, the book of Enoch. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who connected themselves with women, and their spirit assuming many different forms are defiling mankind, and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as Elohim. Notice the angels took many different forms, so you can understand the fallen angels, they're still here, they just take different forms. Right. Okay. Here shall they stand to the day of great judgment, in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. That was the part you were looking for, right? That is it. Sirens, it's interesting when you look them up, sirens are mermaids. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was an interesting part. And, you know, a lot of times, we, you know, you might dress your daughter up as a mermaid or something like that, you know, when we were celebrating pagan feasts and stuff like that, not understanding that you were dressing yourself up as what the women who dealt with the fallen angels had become. That lets you know that those mermaids are demons. Right. And that and they was, glorify more amazing society. Right, and that was the punishment for the women who dealt with the fallen angels to show that that was a sin, and a great one indeed. Wow. That was good edification there. Thank you. Praise the highest. 
I didn't understand what sirens were either. I had to go and look it up and search it. I was like, sirens? What? Like, man, when I, when it came to me, I was like, wow. <laughs> Lo and behold. Right. If anyone is familiar with the Pirates of the Caribbean, they have one of their uh, one of their series, and they actually show the mermaids in their true form, how they ended up attacking the men, and it was all women mermaids. There was no men mermaids like the Little Mermaid. How they tried to portray that there's men. It's all women. All right. So hopefully with understanding all this, we get to see how what the world is pushing is they're glorifying the works of the devil. Right. And hopefully it helps keep us all, and particularly the women here, because we see how the women are so vital to our salvation or to our demise. Hopefully it keeps the women to know which direction to go and to better know what is needed to walk the path towards Christ as they desire to. Right. We went over all these things of what happened before and what the women were faced with back then because the same things are coming here in the end. Because Yache told that it will be as in the days of Noah. Can you read Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 and 39, please? Sure. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The world is going to go completely into iniquity, yet people are still going to be living their life right. because it's the norm, and they're making iniquity the norm hence people will be continuing on until the end comes those who believe will be separating ourselves from unrighteousness more and more as we see the day approaching through exhortations like today and it's very important to understand what's coming what the agenda is what the attack is because they are truly prepping the women to lay with the fallen angels again and beget children, right. according to prophecy. With this, we're going to go to Second Ezra chapter five, verse eight, please. To understand what's coming in the end. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be all sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. That was the key understanding that menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. These monsters are the giants right. that they're going to be having in these end times. Hopefully through, as we've been discussing, see how through the pride and the different things that these women will get to that point that they'll sleep with the angels and bring forth these monsters. So this is what's to come in these end times. This attack on the women has already ensued because we can see, as we've been discussing today, how society is aligning up right with all the iniquity that the scriptures have spoken of of old time. Right. And also, there's prophecies concerning how, particularly, the daughters of Zion are going to be haughty. It's going to be a tough time for the women in these end times. Um, So let's look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 3. Let's look at chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 16, please. All right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to error, and destroy the way of thy path. Continue in verse 16, please. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughter of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. 
to the daughters of Zion that are walking in that haughtiness, they have a punishment coming too. And these end time to help cleanse them. Uh, let's read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 17 through 24, please. Therefore the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come in the past that instead of a sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a rent, and instead of well-set hair baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. This is uh, the women. There's an affliction to come upon the daughters of Zion for their haughtiness. And this is why we're exhorting sisters to take the time to self-examine and get things right now so that you may be prepared for this trial to come and come out on the right side of things right and don't be afraid well have the right fear fear Allah and make the changes right and know that you can overcome these trials because there's no temptation given us that Ahaya won't deliver us from can you read first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 please there have no temptation taking you but such as is common to man and we see that because your mother our mother Eve was tried with the same thing in the beginning right. and the holy women of old were tried with the same thing and we have testimony seeing that there are women who overcame to know that you can also overcame you have Sarah uh, Rebecca Rachel Leah Zilha Bilha Judith Esther uh, Ruth the Moabite there's plenty right continue please and Zipporah Moses's wife but Allah is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. There's a way, just through temperance and patience, there's a way to overcome these trials. Sadly, when we look at the scriptures as a whole, I'm talking about as the world is portraying women, women fit the description of unrighteous women more than the description of the righteous women in the scriptures. Like if you look at um, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 to 12, please. And behold, there met him a woman with an attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. The way the women are taught to dress today is what will constitute the attire of an harlot for promiscuity and the subtlety as Reuben talked about they seek power over men and they plot against men and that's that subtle of heart where they're scheming against the man using their adorning continue and please and once they can't win over they went over by craft All right right uh proverbs chapter 7 verse 11. she is loud and stubborn her feet abide not in her house this is the one when you look at the TV shows, these are how the women are. There's not a meek, silent, loving woman that's discreet. And Chase, rather, she's loud, she's stubborn, she's bold. Right. You know? And the righteous women, their feet, they stayed home. They were keepers in a house. You know, lovers of their husband, lovers of their children. Whereas the women, as portrayed in society today, they can't stay home. They have to be out and about. They have to go do this, go do that. Right. And it's not in righteousness. She's out seeking attention or she's out fulfilling her own desires, not for the sake of the well-being of her family. Like Proverbs 31 talks about the virtuous woman who's out taking care of business, like buying a field or selling merchandise for the well-being of her family. Continue in verse 12, please. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth and wait at every corner. There we see she's out 
for the purpose of lying in wait for someone, seeking that attention for the spirit of fornication's sake, seeking to ensnare men just as the women had ensnared the angels in old time. Another aspect of lying in wait to ensnare in the world today, unfortunately, a lot of women have been taught to dress immodestly and they're out and about looking to ensnare men, but it may not be literally to sleep with them yet. Through the spirit of fornication, as Reuben spake of, by means of their adornment, they're out with the intent to deceive the mind, wanting men to lust after them, and then still a poison of fornication by the glance of an eye, with men to take men captive in their lust for them. It's like they're out and about enjoying the pleasure they get from feeling or being wanted, and having men lust after them. This is another way of ensnaring where a woman may not be trying to get a man to sleep with her per se. But the spirit of fornication is still working in her, seeking to ensnare men to lust after her, which leads them to commit adultery in their hearts, as Yache spake of. This world glorifies a fornicating woman. So they, yeah. they idolize that, like, oh, you know, she's doing this, she's doing that. Oh, she, you know, she got him under wraps. He's bowing down to her. She got, you know, like, no, she's completely in iniquity and that's what's being uplifted today All right one of the big things is that want an eye that's glorified for the women like you have the commercials with the eyeliner and the makeup commercials where they always show the woman with the seductive eyes to lead the man astray but scripturally this is a sign of order we read our Sirach, chapter 26, verse 9, please. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. See, the things that are contemned in the sight of Allah Hayyam are glorified here in the world. All right, there are some more scriptures we going through to see how the things that are frowned upon in scripture are looked well upon in the world. Sirach 26 and 4 to verse 25. Please. So right, chapter 26, verse 24. A dishonest woman contemneth shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. So we see the, a dishonest woman, she hates shame. She's shameless. But in society, that's uh, viewed as a, a, you know, a real strong, proud woman where they say whatever they want and do whatever they want. But scripturally, this is, is not looked upon in righteousness, not looked upon as something good. Whereas the honest woman that will reverence her husband, that's frowned upon in society. Oh. Continue, please. Throughout 26 and 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamed fast will fear Ahia. This one, I found it very interesting that even in scripture, they viewed a shameless woman as a dog. And we know how society sadly degrades women. It's, it's sad what society does because it teaches women to, to operate the wrong way and then also degrades them for operating in the wrong way. Right. Whereas they use terms for women to refer to them as dogs, even though they're teaching women to operate as dogs. It's it's sad how the world works. This world is toxic. And it just wants to see us all fall. So hopefully we see that that shamefacedness is better. That will keep a woman honest in reverence and in the fear of Ahaya to know not to give heed unto these things anymore. And that knowing that 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 bold, tight woman is frowned upon in the sight of Allah Hayyam. And also, it causes bad relationships with the family, like Sirach chapter 22, verse 5 shows. Please. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise her. And we see how boldness, the things that are glorified in society, causes friction in the home. 
so that the women can know these are the things you want to step away from and walk in that that humility and honoring your father and your husband because that's where your wisdom lies even as Sirach chapter 26 verse 26 shows please a woman that honor of her husband shall be judged wise of all but she that dishonor of him in her pride shall be counted unholy of all now we see where pride leads as opposed to the meekness that Allah had called women unto now seeing where society is going we hopefully by now everybody has a good understanding of what the attack is on women and how they're doing it All right it's important for sisters to understand you don't want to continue in the way the world is going you see we've seen how eve she had fell from the faith and been given over therefore leave even more now understanding what transpired so that you may attain in faith know his will and walk in simplicity to perform it so now we're going to go into some things to understand what ahaya's will is so that we know the things to focus on it for the sisters uh, can you read the this is the epistle of polycarp to the philippians chapter 2 verse 6 please and teach ourselves first to walk according to the commandments of ahaya and then your wives to walk likewise according to the faith that is given to them in charity and in purity, loving their own husbands with all sincerity, and all others alike with all temperance, and to bring up their children in the instruction and fear of Ahia. Now, also for the aged women, there's righteousness that's ordained for them as well to keep them from reproach. Um, Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, please. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chast, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Allah be not blasphemed. We see how Paul gave instruction for the younger women and also for the elder women to help themselves and also help the word of Allah from being blasphemed by the younger women through their example and exhortation. So there we have some guidance. And our mother Eve, we started off with her telling how she fell. And let's close off with her telling her exhortation for us all. Apocalypse of Moses, chapter 30, please. Now then, my children, I have shown you the way in which we were deceived. And do ye guard yourselves from transgressing against the good. May Ahaya be with us all. And may Ahaya strengthen us all. So hope this was edifying. Um, I hope we all get a better understanding of what's coming and know what we need to do. All right? As we get into edification for the sisters, remember you can visit the website and go to the tabs for edification for women. You can hit the Simplicity for Women tab and read that for edification. Or you can hit the plus sign with the drop tab, which has edification on different topics for women. And you also have Building the Family, where you can tap Building the Family and get edification, or hit the plus sign. And there's a drop tab as well for more edification for the sisters. For understanding as we delve into edification for the sisters and with that we look forward to spending more time with you all and getting edification in the faith of Yache Christ praise the higher 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 praise the higher